I've covered James Rolfe two times before on my channel. The first was a look at what I consider to be one of his best series, Board James. Then I took a look at the messy history of the ABGN movie. I'll link both of those in the description section below. Today I'm going to be looking at a very specific project in the Cinemassacre timeline. To do that, we have to go back to 2015, a time when James Rolfe was not only juggling a typically busy year-round schedule for his channel, but also embarking on a therapeutic short film that called back to his earliest episodes of The Angry Video Game Nerd. What video am I talking about? I'm talking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the game, the movie. An elaborate video where he put all of the filmmaking knowledge he had gained at that point in time to good use. A passion project that would keep him going strong for years to come. So sit back, relax, grab a beaker full of evil, and let's push play on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the game, the movie, the retrospective. Sixteen years ago, in 2006, James Rolfe uploaded the second video in the Angry Video Game Nerd series to YouTube, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It was the first time James revealed his face as the nerd. It wasn't so much a review of the game, per se, it was more of a declaration of his hatred for the NES abomination. One where he could barely bring himself to show any footage due to the pain it causes him. Well, five years later, a follow-up video that actually went into the details of the game was released. In it, James points out how everyone is attacking Dr. Jekyll for no reason, how the townspeople hate him and how they think he wears his underwear backwards and has eyeballs for testicles, or how don't you hate it when you're just walking around minding your own business when someone just lays a bomb at your feet, or how the only thing you can actually hurt is a bee, by accident, even though your cane is almost completely worthless as a weapon? It would be another four years until James would explore the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde game once again, this time with the attention and detail he had always wanted. But before that, there would be a few important stops along the way. I already covered this in my video, The Movie That Broke James Rolfe, but to sum it up quickly, James accomplished his lifelong dream. He raised an insane amount of money and made a feature film like he had always wanted to. It was one of the highest points of his career and rightfully so. He built an audience that cares deeply about him and his work to this day. Unfortunately, the movie also took a toll on James. The production budget ran out fast, the amount of time it took to complete the movie kept getting longer and longer, and it would be the last feature film he has made to this day, as of this video at least. I think James will make another feature film someday, and I'll be one of the first ones to check it out. I still believe in the guy, and I think a lot of the fans are deeply disappointed with the way Cinemasker's channel has gone in recent years because we feel like we know James on a personal level. It's like someone you hate to see fail. I mean, he hasn't even failed really. He's got a successful channel and still pumps out content for it to this day, regardless of the hard time he gets from fans and non-fans alike. However, today's video is about a time right after the movie was completed and released where James was on an inspired run of ideas. Sadly, in only a few years' time, Cinemassacre would look completely different than it did in 2015. Let's take a look at why. First of all, James and Mike Mondays was still in full swing. In fact, it was the first video to kick off 2015 with a playthrough of Shadows of the Empire on the N64. Bootsy Beats debuted its charming run of four episodes. Kyle Justin, the guitar guy, was still showing up in videos in front of and behind the camera. The final season of Board James was in production throughout the year, leading to its epic finale. Monster Madness 9 was in full swing during the entire month of October. Not only that, James was still releasing AVGN episodes regularly. All in all, James seemed to be at a peak of creativity and enthusiasm. With Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the game, the movie, James seemed to have learned from the things that hindered him on the AVGN movie shoot, like filming across the country in California where the prices are unreasonable. For his new short film, he shot in his hometown of Philadelphia. James also featured a load of his friends in the project, which was always a plus to fans of the channel. And it being a parody trailer, it didn't wear out its welcome with its runtime. Although Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was only a 3 minute and 57 second short film, it took months to complete, and James seemed to love every minute of it. The first scene to be shot was the bar scene where the townsfolk are verbally bashing Dr. Jekyll. Kevin Finn, who you may remember as the Glitch Gremlin, plays the ringleader of the townsfolk, while Rob Wharton, who was featured in many of James's early films like Kung Fu Werewolf from Outer Space, plays another townie. 
Also, there's that girl from that show that disappeared from Cinemassacre almost as fast as it was put on there. Does anyone out there remember the show Over Analyzers? Well, she's in it, and he's in it, and he's in it. Interestingly enough, this guy, Matt Conant, was a writer on Mystery Science Theater 3000, the revival show that was on Netflix. All in all, Mike, Doug Walker, Kevin and Rob, and the peeps from Over Analyzers all made a fun appearance in the project. However, James decided to hire a working actor in the Philadelphia area named Bradley Christian Wren. He got inducted into the Cinemassacre way of filmmaking very fast. And he held his own on screen. I love the part where he says, I got you, you son of a bitch, to the dead bee he killed. James also hired a local actress named Jenna Horton to play Jekyll's bride. She seemed like she was having a blast laying waste to the set during her scenes. James also got the epic voice guy from Honest Trailers to narrate the short, Mr. John Bailey. I point this out to show how freeing this all must have been for James, working with new talent and his friends, all in his hometown where he could still keep the channel going. It's great to see, and it also shows how James is capable of making something fun and fast-paced, yet original and experimental. In his making of video, you get to see all the practical and green screen effects he used. Not only that, I thought the bar scene had real wood walls, but it was actually wallpaper. James could have either gone to a real bar somewhere or create it himself. He chose to create it himself. That's the stuff I love. I could watch the Cinemassacre making of videos all day long. One year later, James would continue his trend of fake movie trailers with the Astro Bastards. In it, he used Kevin Finn, Rob Walton, Doug Walker, and Kyle Justin once again. This is not only because they're all friends, but also because they shot this and the Dr. Jekyll video simultaneously, since James was working on multiple projects at the time. He mentioned in the making of Astro Bastards that they all shot a scene for a third fake trailer that they were keeping a secret at the time. I'm not sure which one he's talking about though, it might be the fake documentary short Mimal the Elf. Or Mimal, is it Mimal or Mimal? Anyway, let me know in the comments if anyone knows what it was. Kyle Justin was helping with the set design again on this one, as well as the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde video. Mike appeared as well in a stellar role. Ask yourself something. Why do you love Cinemassacre? For me, it's the cozy feeling it gives off. It's also the inspiring nature of James himself. People sometimes look at YouTubers like they're not as legitimate because they make videos on, well, YouTube. But TV was new once, and it was also not taken as seriously at the time as movies were. I think these days, people are starting to see the power of YouTube as a legitimate way to consume entertainment. And when we look back at who were some of the pioneers of this new media, James Rolfe will surely be high on that list. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to throw a random bomb on the like and subscribe buttons, and swat that B on the notification bell. That way you'll know when a new video comes out. See you next time.